This is a story about a 90-year-old car. Back in 1927, Chevrolet and Ford were the giants of the low-priced American cars with the Ford Model A and the Chevrolet 4. When Henry Ford heard that Walter Chrysler was planning to enter into the low-priced car market, he reportedly said, Walter, you'll go broke. Chevrolet and I have that market all sewed up. Chrysler was not deterred and his new low-priced car was unveiled on July the 7th, 1928 at Madison Square Gardens Motor Show. It was named the Chrysler Plymouth, later to be named Just Plymouth. It was named after the Pilgrim Band, who were the first American colonists. The Plymouth cost much more than the Ford or the Chevrolet, but buyers got a far better car than they could from those market leaders. It was marketed as an absolutely new development in motor car style. The car's body was wood, frame and metal overcover, same as many other cars. They have 20 inch wooden spoke wheels as standard, wire wheels were an optional extra. Some models had an adjustable front seat known as a camper seat which folds down in line with the rear seat so you can actually sleep on it. This also allows for wider door openings as the rear of the seat is not fixed to the middle door pillar like other cars. The seat is also adjustable with the back folding down to suit your back or slides in and out for your legs. They were issued with a special Fedco badge mounted on the instrument panel. This badge was for security as it has a special prefix engraved within it. You can work out when the car was actually made from this number. It has a new cylinder profile, chromium plated radiator surround compared to other makes which much wider. This made the bonnet and the car look longer. It came with new design fender mudguards, which were known as crown top beaded edge. New design bowl type headlamps. Luxurious deep upholstery normally found on cars in the much higher price bracket. It has four wheel internal hydraulic brakes, a system developed by Chrysler, with patents assigned to Lockheed to encourage widespread adoption by other car manufacturers. It would take Ford and Chevrolet many years to move to the more reliable hydraulic system. The Plymouth Silver Dome 4 cylinder side valve 170 cubic inch engine develops 45 horsepower at 2800 revs per minute, which allowed speeds of 60 miles an hour. It was a full force lubricated engine with an oil filter. It has 4.66 compression ratio to allow it to run on various styles of fuels. This engine was all mounted on rubber engine mounts to create a smooth motoring experience, not like other cars. The Plymouth was manufactured in five different body styles, a Roadster, a Tourer, a four-door sedan, a two-door sedan and a coupe. There were variations of these styles as well. Plymouth Model Q production continued until February the 4th, 1929 when it was replaced by the Model U. In the United States, Chrysler had made 60,270 Plymouths and in Detroit and another 5,827 in Windsor, Canada. Plymouth, Plymouth's success brought about the building of a new manufacturing plant. At the time, the largest car plant in the world with nearly 23 acres of floor space. The Plymouth in this video is a four-door tourer which was purchased as a wreck back in 1998 from Bundaberg in Queensland, Australia. It had sat in a garage for 44 years before we trailered it back to Brisbane on a very wet day. Eight months later, this Plymouth was back on the road and has since covered 20,000 miles without any major problems. Other than a few safety modifications, it is still fairly original. The car was repainted in two-tone blue in 2016. This Plymouth chassis was assembled in Detroit on the 19th of September 1928. It was then shipped to Adelaide in Australia where the body was built by the Holden Motor Bodies Company. 
We know of only nine other Plymouth Qs in Australia that are on the road, so they are now a rear vehicle. We run the car on standard 91 grade fuel for short runs, but use premium 98 grade on longer runs where hills are involved. We travel at up to 45 miles per hour, which is 70, 75 k's an hour on the open highways. Having a vintage car is a great hobby and belonging to a great multi-make car club like the Queensland Vintage Vehicle Association is well worthwhile. A great car that is 90 years old. A great hobby for young and old.